Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo Spicky. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to Springs Reverb and a really nice, authentic, uh, vintage reverb with Baxandal EQ, which you can find um, here on the right hand side. As you can see, a very nice uh, a UI, as always, from Audio Thing. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. And if you want to participate to uh, the giveaway to win a copy of Springs Reverb, please do check in the video description that the giveaway is still open and winners have not been announced. And if you want, please follow the video uh, the instruction on the video description to claim your code. So let's go through a little bit to how it works and then we are going to play different audio sources with the reverb. Okay, and the first thing to say is that it has uh, um, emulation for uh, many different uh, type of springs reverb, which you can see here, a lot of selection. And then um, it uses uh, very much uh, convolution and um, modeling to um, to emulate that uh, springs uh, reverb. And uh, of course, you can change also the, re the impulse response or how that is actually played. I will show you that in a moment. It has also a tone stack, which is added to it. Of course, it is an emulation and it is the Baxandol EQ, which you can find here. Normally, um, that comes with uh, two bands, bass and the treble, but here you have an additional one, a mid one as well with a Q parameter. So how does it work? Well, first of all, a uh, standard UI from uh, um, Audio Thing. And I should say also that uh, um, I'm just using a pure piano at the moment. So let's uh, bypass it. That's how it sounds like. And now let's uh, enable it. So button on and off to bypass it. And then here is where you select your favorite presets. Um, so you can go by the factory bank, also by the user one, up and down with the arrow here. Straightforward as uh, the other application from Audio Thing. You can save the preset, delete it, and randomize the settings as well to create a new one. You can lock parameters and um, so that they don't change um, when you actually um, change presets. So you click in there and then you click on one of the parameters you want to lock and click on the symbol again to exit that mode. And then you have an Umbunga menu which gives you a lot of different uh, options including, for example, locking and unlocking parameters, uh, copy and paste preset, having access to the alarm manual, the about, and um, have also additional option here to alleviate the stress to uh, your device. And of course, you can change also the detail block size. Um, so moving on, here you have a band width, which uh, is really useful in terms of isolate a little bit uh, uh, lower and higher frequency um, of the incoming sound. Okay, next you have, uh, you can adjust the input. Of course, double click to go back to the default setting. You can uh, add a preamp distortion. Careful that it will increase a lot of the amplitude, so it will pick. Yeah, you can adjust the dry level and also the wet level, okay, of course. So, again, be careful because as you increase the wet, it will increase a lot in terms of amplitude. Next, you have a pre-delay, which is useful and um, to add it in. And it is pre-effect, uh, pre pre-reverb. You can adjust the stereo width from mono to wide. You can emphasize a particular set of frequency. Um, using this dial, which are dependent on the spring reverb that you have selected. Here you can add a soft uh, um, compression. Again, the um, frequency that is emphasized here depends on the spring reverb that you have selected up here. Indeed, you can choose many different ones, and if you click here, you have a list of all of them. There's really a lot here, and you can find, if you click on the question mark here, a description as well as you move between all the different ones. So, really nice. Yeah, 
Here you can decide if you want a long or short decay. Here you can enable high quality, HQ. Of course, it is more CPU intensive. You can invert the phase and you can add some noise. And here you can choose to have the envelope applied to the noise. Of course, if you want that. Now, if you click here where there is this wrench, go into this mode where it shows you the re impulse response. And here you can change the pitch. And you create intestine effect. You can really uh, muddle the sounds. Here you can start, you can set the start and also the end. And uh, here you can do fade in and change the curvature as well. And you can do fade out and also change the curvature as well. So really, really useful. And of course, click on the exit, on the X here to exit it. On the right side, you have these tone stack EQ, Buxendall EQ emulation. So you have three bands here. You have um, the frequency here and then the gain here that you can adjust. You can um, enable disable it, you can have it to act on the mix, dry and wet, or only on the wet signal, and you can add also soft clipping as well when you are around the zero, zero uh, decibel. Um, so as you can see, really, really nice and straightforward to use it. So let's try it with some presets. Let's try bubbles. <laughs> As you can hear, really nice. Um, let's try this uh, um, spring splash. Sunken city. Vintage vibe. Warm secret. Um, soaked in springs. Now, let's try something different. Let's remove these uh, uh, pure piano and let's select something like um, Hammerhead. Why not? And let's connect it to the keyboard like so. And let's listen. Little verb. Really nice. Really, really, really nice. Let's try with uh, a guitar. So, um, still Guitar Pro. So let's load that in and let's um, uh, connect it to the keyboard. Yes.
course, having the ability here to adjust how you play the impulse response waveform allows you to change the characteristic of the sounds, and that is really, really um, useful, really nice. It makes it really unique. Okay, I'm going to stop here for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye.